Greetings teachers and welcome to our virtual PD video on how to recreate the logs life matter model in your classroom. This model will be very similar to the other day's model tracking energy through the ecosystem. As you see, we have the same setup with the necklace cards and the students in between taking notes. But you're also going to notice instead of string, which represented the energy, we're going to be using small square blocks representing the matter and the flow of matter in an ecosystem model. In the previous day's lesson, you used the energy tracking lens and used the questions, where does the energy come from? Where does the energy go? In today's lesson, you'll be using the same exact lens, except we'll be calling it the matter tracking lens. You'll be asking the same exact questions, but about matter and the flow of matter in that ecosystem model. One of the main goals of this lesson and model is to show that plants get most of their matter from water and air. It's a very common misconception for students to think that plants get all the matter they need from the soil. They might need a little bit of soil for nutrients to keep growth going, but again, we're here to focus. You'll see that we have more blocks and more little plastic matter squares in our air and water. One of the big differences between our energy model and the matter model is that when it comes to matter, we're not starting with the sun. Instead, for a producer like living plants, most of its matter comes from the water and the air. So we want to point out the difference here between using particles of matter versus the strings of energy uh, from the, the yellow yarn that we used in the previous lesson. When we're talking about the forms of matter and how our organisms use the matter, when we talk about living plants, we're talking about photosynthesis and how the plant predominantly uses water and air to make its sugars. So to really help kids visualize that, we're going to have them, um, the living plants particles, take particles from the water and particles from the air to help create some graphic representation of something on that plant. So for example, I'm taking mostly air and mostly water particles right now, and I'm gonna take just one or two soil pieces right, to help represent for me a branch of the tree that has grown with the help of matter from mostly water, mostly air, and a little bit of soil. As your class works through modeling the flow of matter through different components of the ecosystem, you'll want students to break down their models when they are consumed by other organisms so that those organisms can use those same cubes to recreate parts of their own organism, whether it's a little antenna, a leg, um, or any other piece uh, that the student can quickly construct. Also note that not all of the matter that an organism might take in should come exclusively from the creature that is eaten. All the organisms in our ecosystem also drink water and they also breathe in air, which can be emphasized on the question about matter gains and losses. Remember that creatures and organisms will also breathe out air and will also excrete, and that that matter in turn should be returned to those different components, whether it's the air or water uh, or it might end up going uh, to a decomposer in a future part of the uh, matter story that you will be building with your students. So right now, Ms. P and I are going to interact uh, 
a part of the system where matter is flowing from the plant or the log, if you will, to one of the creatures. Remember that we're going to be using the matter tracking lens. That energy tracking lens is sort of crossed out. So we're to asking our students about the matter story. Where does it come from? And then ultimately, where does it go? To do that, we follow the four stages uh, that are listed below. So first of all, Miss P and class, right? What are the components of this system here? Well, I am a plant and I am a producer. And if a kid just shares a producer, what does it mean to be a producer? Um, it means that I make my own food. Uh, as we saw earlier when you took those air and water particles and put them all together. Yes. Awesome. Now, right, in my case, the wood-eating insects are consumers. We don't make our own food. We need to eat or consume other organisms, other components of our ecosystem. So, right, if we move down the matter tracking lens, the next step is the forms of matter. In this case, the forms of matter that are being transferred are, of course, our solid plant matter that I, the wood-eating insect, are going to take. Okay? Which leads us to our next question, transfers and transformations. So, Ms. B, your matter has been transferred to me, the wood-eating insect. Is there any other matter that I, the wood-eating insect, might be consuming at this time? You might eat, drink some water. Oh, I might drink some water. So I can take additional cubes from water if need be. Anything else? Um, you might be breathing in some air. Oh, so I might also be adding to this model by taking in some air cubes, right? In all cases, what we're doing here is we're transferring matter from one place to the wood eating insect and maybe the more important question here is asking our students well what is it transforming into in my case i could be growing into a larger wood eating insect or i could be repairing some damaged part of my body right the last part of the tra the model tra uh, matter tracking lens is those gains and losses we talked about the gains a little bit but what are some places where I could be losing that? Well, you know, all animals must do their business. Mm -hmm. They go to the bathroom. So some of this matter is going to be moved to a new component to be talked about later, right? Or possibly the soil. Okay. Or if I'm peeing, most of that is water. So I might add these cubes back to the water container. And not only do we do our business, but for every breath in, we take a breath out. And so some of this matter might also make its way back into the air. At this point, we've reached the end of our flow where we ask ourselves, where does this matter go? And we repeat this process again with a new component of the ecosystem. You will get to the point in your matter flow model where you might hit one of these three top level consumers. That means that nothing really eats them or uses their matter. So what happens? You can ask your students. Well, what really happens is these consumers will die. And then after they die, they will fall down to the soil and sit there. So let's say I have my little squirrel here. Here is the matter in the squirrel. It falls down to the soil. Mm -hmm. But that matter doesn't end there. Where does it go? What happens to it? Well, then you have something like a decomposer. An animal like the earthworm will take that squirrel and break it down even further to make that matter into food or whatever the decomposer needs to survive its life processes. Remember that no classroom model will ever be exactly the same from one class to the next, as student responses to your questions will ultimately drive which, which uh, organisms eat which and what will happen to their matter as it flows through the ecosystem. 
What you should always keep in mind are the two dominant goals of this model. One, that producers primarily obtain their matter from water and air, and that the matter they obtain is the same matter that gets cycled through the rest of the ecosystem's food chain or food webs as one organism consumes another. You can also make a point of emphasizing the use of our terms like producers, consumers, and decomposers. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us.